You can scratch on a controller. I'm just not good at it. That's all. Welcome back to another Music Gear Monday. I'm Carl Carell. Everybody who's been tuning in on Twitch, I've been trying to get the live stream right. I appreciate you. Every Monday night at 7 p.m. Mountain Time, I'll be recapping Music Mondays that I premiere here and talking live with you guys about Music Gear and different topics. So join me, follow the Twitch. I'll put that link in the description below. It's another Music Gear Monday. Today feels good. We are talking about a piece of hardware and not just a piece of hardware we're talking about the concept of what this hardware represents this Roland DJ 202 is a very entry-level controller also a very fun tool to mess around and play with it is compact it is light bus powered you don't have to worry about plugging this guy in you can use this as your main source of audio for your laptop so you can watch videos and send the audio out from those videos YouTube whatever to your your main outputs you have two rca outputs in the back you have a microphone input so all of you people that want to you know dj on a controller and stream and make it super easy you could take this setup with your laptop out to the middle of nowhere and hook up your hot spot cool controller this one actually comes in with a built-in drum machine which is kind of cool that's the Roland way so the reason why Roland came out with these controllers the 808 the 909 the 202 this whole line of controllers was based on all these classic different and drum machines uh, and concepts of being able to DJ back and forth and then play a beat cutting or scratching over that beat that was kind of the concept with these I feel like my producer friends were a little bit more excited about them than my DJ friends were with this controller you have two platters just like you would have a right and a left CDJ or a right and a left turntable and then you have your mixer set up down the middle and you have your filter to kind of do sweeps get your sweet spots going you have your high your mid your low so you know if you want to do any cuts cutting any frequencies out you want to get a little more precise you can do that as well you have a sample level for your sampler and then you have a master and your Q mix Q to your master and then you also have a headphone volume level here so pretty basic controller this is what you're gonna find on most controllers other than the drum machine that is built into it and maybe some of the color configuration and also having that Roland logo on there is gonna make it a little bit more fancy you have your Q buttons, you have your play buttons, just like on a CDJ. Down here, you have your cues, so you can use all eight of these as cue points. You could use them to loop. You have a sequencer, and then you have a sampler, which most controllers are gonna have. You have the option to switch between decks. There are some controllers that only come with two decks, and you can't switch between decks to go four decks, which is kind of cool to have. This is probably like one of the cheapest controllers that you could buy. So if you go on Amazon, Reverb, or anything like that, these these controllers are running for I'll put the price up right here this is how much they're going for there are definitely cheaper controllers something like this is usually gonna run you in that price range so a couple of things we'll get into. Getting started with DJing, I encourage it. You know, if the music moves you enough and you wanna share it with people, that's really the essence of what DJing is. is you're sharing an experience, you're sharing music, you're sharing energy. I love it. But the technical aspect of DJing can always be learned. How good you wanna be at DJing, that's what the difference is. It's gonna take you a certain amount of time to learn certain skills and whether or not you have the discipline to stay in it and learn those skills is gonna determine how good of a DJ you are and how far you go or at least that's that's how I feel my personal opinion on getting started with the controller controllers are easily accessible at first sight looking at a controller it looks like a ton of buttons and a ton of knobs but as soon as you have those knobs and buttons explained to you pretty streamlined if you have the means to hop into turntables or cdjs and you want to play at clubs and festivals and i feel like go for it that is what you should go for and that's what you should practice on and get better on and not to say that there aren't any controllers out there that are advanced there are some really advanced controllers so my personal opinion i feel like a controller is a great starting point especially for people that are live streaming right now or getting into sharing their music through the internet most of the controllers that are coming out now you know are so easy to manage with software and programs it's gonna make it just easier easier i keep saying easier that is easier it's easier 
So the downside of getting started on a controller would be the build quality of your controller. Controllers can sometimes be cheaply made, cheaply designed, oh. feel cheap, not have robust buttons, knobs, or switches. When you're using a controller and you go from a controller to something like a DJ mixer, or it's a more robust, heavier piece of equipment, you actually have resistance in your crossfader. You know, just everything feels a little bit different on those mixers. It might make you a little uncomfortable. That is kind of the drawback of starting on a controller, but at the same time, you are just starting. So that's something that you would build your way into. That is something to think about when hopping in and looking at a DJ controller. All in all, I feel like if you can hop into a controller, this is the cheapest, quickest way to get into DJing. Buying a controller, downloading the software, dumping your library of music into that software, listening to your music, going back and forth and blending your music, listening to different genres or styles of music or the specific style of music that you want to DJ and figuring out your beats, figuring out how to match and blend those things. These are the basics that you will have to learn to DJ and you can do that on a controller. As far as scratching and turntablism, big mix blends and four CDJ mixing and all that stuff, that's stuff that you'll have to learn down the line, uh, but it all starts somewhere. Anyway, that's gonna be it for Music Gear Monday. Make sure to join us on Clubhouse to keep the conversation alive. We're gonna be talking about how some of our DJ friends got their start, what kind of equipment they used, and what they think the best option would be for people just getting started. And until next time, that's Music Gear Monday. We'll see you again soon. Peace. Easier, easier, so that it's easier, easier, so that it's easier.